Coming up on today's Retro Robin Show, we have a look at the game that I didn't play quite right, thanks to what my blob uh, gave his comments and I realised that I was actually loading the thing wrong, so we've got to put that right. We're going to be human and look at some new games, that's right, we're going to look at a new game. It's a similar to Lemmings thing. Also, we're going to back to the very early days of Crash, right? <laughs> find out which one. More coming on Ursy Spectrum and a whole lot of me. So join me now for the Retro Robin Show. Welcome to the Retro Robin Show with me, Wayne Retro Robins, of course. If you love a bit of 8-bit, well, then you're in the right place because this show is all about the 8-bit games for the ZX Spectrum and Commodore as well. So, what's on today's show? Well, first of all, I'll start with an apology for a game for last week's show where I got it all wrong, couldn't get it to work, thought it was ridiculously hard. Turns out it's only very fractionally easier than that, but you just need to load it in the right version of the ROM. And I was trying to on the 1 to 8K, Pentium, and of course a 48K, but you need to be 48K only uh, in order for it to get it to work. More about that in a minute. Also, we're going back to 1984, issue number two. Yes, we're going back to the early days of Crash, where we're going to take a look at some of the games that was in that particular Crash magazine. Have a look at the review from then, give them a re-review now and see how they stand the test of time. Give it the Retro Robins treatment as always on this show. We'll have a little dose of Commodore versus Spectrum towards the end. Huh, I'm out of breath now. <laughs> Um, right, yeah, what I'd normally tell you is the use of sound today is provided by the Harlequin. Uh, we've got the Spectrum Plus 3 as well, so on standby, the Toast Rack and Plus 2A. Not the grey one this week, I've put it to rest. It needs a little bit of work. Um, not a lot of work, it's all down to Ian at Mutant Caterpillar. I've got to uh, sort out a bill with him, he's a good bloke, he does some great work, of course. And what else is that? Oh yes, 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 we've got a couple of new games to have a look at too. Mmm, human! <laughs> and that's all coming up on today's show. As always, if you like today's show, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up of course, I always like to read thumbs up. Uh, every week I get somebody put one down, uh, it must be the same person every week, because there's only one one down every week in the same show, never mind, eh? Uh, there's no pleasing everybody, but at least I can please, hopefully, the majority of people. So, uh, let's have a look at this game that I messed up last week. So, the down touch, right, the game I was talking about was this one. We'll have a look at the loading screen again. I actually tried to run this in the 1 to 8K mode, and uh, I'll show you what was going on, first of all, just a quick recap from last week. We got the QA, uh, sorry, we got... Well, we're always using Kempston one, so I'm going to use Kempston again and uh, go forth. And it was a case of, um, oh, activate the Kempston joystick, there we go. Thrusting your way around here, but if you notice in the top, very top corner uh, on the left, there's a little bit of corruption there, right? And I hadn't noticed, and it was pointed out to me uh, by uh, Waterboy Blob. <laughs> um, not got his name wrong, but then I should have written that down. But very kindly, he's uh, always kind of uh, helped me a little bit. So thanks for pointing that out to me that there was something wrong in the code. Because I thought the first level was really easy. And this is where it all went horribly wrong. I was trying to get past, well, on this occasion, see how it's got like a solid corruption block? Uh, there. You know, you have to be really, really accurate to get through that. And I couldn't believe I'd actually got through that. Because when you actually load the proper version of the game, which is what I'm going to do now, we're going to use the 48K version. And it's in 48K mode then. So this is only a 48K game. It will not work in 128K. So it was uh, released by David... Uh, there at the bottom you can see his name 2021 I'm having to look over the camera in order to see the, see the screen of course so let's have a look at this game now in its full glory which is what I should have done first time last week but I didn't give it enough investigation time 
So it's easy enough to control with your joystick that is. I found it really easy to start with. Uh, this level like was really easy and then suddenly got ridiculously hard. But it's not as hard as all that. In fact it's you touch the wall by the way, yes you absolutely do bounce off. You change complete direction. So if I'm going that way, boom, there you go. Total direction change. And that's part of the game mechanic. Spikes there on the top and bottom will kill you. You click the last suite. I mean, it's an unusual looking sprite, a round circle with a dot. Now this time, if you watch those spikes, they actually disappear. That changes the whole concept of the game from what I was playing last week. Uh, last week I was making it look like it was an impossible game to play. But actually, there are challenges in it and uh, just a little bit of concentration there look it's good you have losing the time limit mind you but they're not too difficult ah there you go i've just lost a life but i'll get through this screen now because it isn't too hard uh not as hard as i thought it first was going to be when there was corruption and i couldn't get past because it was an entire block of gravies I'm cutting it really close, aren't I? See, I'm rushing. When you rush, you don't get anywhere. Just wait a few seconds. Oh! <laughs> Did you hear my frustration then? Just got to be careful, that's all. Just got to be really careful. Now, we should get past the second screen. Ah, oh, the... In for the chop, the scissors got me at the end. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll pause the video and I'll get past this screen for you. I'm scared. There we go, through the screen. And now this this is a fun. I like this one. Don't touch any of the wall. I don't think you can touch any of the wall. Should we have a look? Yeah, you can. Touching the walls just bounces you off. But be warned. Um, I want to take the furthest one away last because if you see that little what looks like it was out of Manic Miner. <laughs> that uh, device it's in the same location actually when I click the last sweet he will follow you intensely he changes to an evil face oh my life he ain't happy is he look at him <laughs> I'll give him the run around for a bit but you've got to get to the center square without getting touched by him which indeed is fairly easy <laughs> he's angry as anything and now it gets a little bit really hard and challenging because now it's all about timing and you've only got a certain amount of time. Did I say earlier that it's a good job there ain't a time limit on it? Well actually there is. And it's uh, not easy to get to the next screen after this one. So uh, you've got to be fast. You've got to be really fast. We've got a little bit longer before I give it another re-review. <laughs> The first new game I've had to re-review because I got it wrong first time round, but hell, I'll admit to my mistakes, not a problem. I'm only human after all, and I will make these errors in judgement, and uh, especially new games. So, now I've got these fighters, as you can see you've got some nice looking sprites, but they're very stationary aren't they? There's no movement to these particular sprites. I know you're all willing me on out there to get a little bit further, but it's uh, probably not going to happen. <laughs> this is where it usually goes horribly wrong. Got to be quick now because I've got whoa, hardly any time to get round. As soon as you hear that ticking going by, for some strange reason, yes, indeed, your time does go slightly slower. I'm going to run out of time. Oh, 
Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to absolutely nail it down here. Oh, time's up so close. But you get the general idea. It's not too bad a game, actually, and I gave it a really poor rating last week, so I apologise to the coder for that. Simply because it was my particular error, um, I didn't realise that you couldn't play this in 128k mode. Um, and I should have tried it in the 48k, so it's a 48k only game. And I'm not going to be overly to the top generous on it because I could have felt that the stationary sprites could have had a little bit of movement, like their arms could be moving in or out or something, just to give it a little bit extra. But they're not bad looking sprites, so they look like sort of cross between a crab with an extra face on it and uh, eyes and teeth. Um, it's not a bad game to play actually, quite enjoyable. It gradually gets harder and it's a nice use of the background sprites there I quite like as well. So yeah. Uh, last week I gave it a dismal rating. This week though I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. And uh, well yeah, it's an improvement to what it was last week. I'm still not one of my favourite games and probably will give it a go again to see how I get on next time round. In the meantime, it's good to be human, so let's have a look at something a little bit more human. Humans! It's a new game uh, released this week. I've had a look at it and I've had a little play of it. It's based a little bit on lemmings, where you have to save the lemmings. Um, on this particular game, though, you do have a bit of... Hey, why so? So it is 128k, um, which is great. Uh, good use of AY music. Uh, you got one for the info or M to start. We'll get a look at the info. Give you a chance. Using one or two to select left or right. OP or Q and A uh, is all you need for the keys. Which will use the keys, why not? I don't know, I can use Josie. Mm, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of torn. Okay. Screen 2. Oh, so it's QAOP and 1 and 2. So. First level's fairly easy. Um, you, if you look at the top, the very top of the screen, see how I'm moving that uh, thing along there? It also tells you in words what it is. So if you don't understand, that's a dig, which we're going to do now. And be the way, you've got a certain amount of time. So you stop one of them to dig a hole. And hopefully you'll stop the same one again to dig a hole. You don't want them to fall too far because like that. <laughs> Instant death. Um, you can climb as well. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm about to lose all my humans. That was a cracking rescue there, but we'll try again. <laughs> The good thing on this game, you can actually look at the screen ahead. And uh, yes, it has stayed exactly where I wanted it to stay. Ah, right, okay. That's supposed to be dig, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so now this time we want to get him about there, don't we? So that he hasn't got to fall too far. And then uh, we're home and dry. They're just going to run across that wall, so there's no need to do anything else. And we've rescued all of the humans in this first screen, which is great. First thing I noticed about this game, yeah, it's it's not bad. It's, it's exactly it's, what it is. It's a lemons clone, isn't it, really? But um, nice looking sprite for the human. Very well worked out. But don't be fooled, because if you thought that was easy, well, it gets hard very quickly, very fast. Um, right, what we need to do now is we need to stop him. Then we've got to um, find a way to... What's that one? He'll explode if you don't hurry up. Uh, oops. <laughs> so that's what that does. Yes, we need we need to build some stairs, don't we? So we've got to... We wanted it down. Mm. Right, okay. So now we've got to dig. So if we can 
dig there. Oh, I've lost one, lost two. What are they all doing up there? And I've lost this screen because that soul survivors, he's a dead man. Because there's no way he's going to get across there, is it? <laughs> oh dear me. What's he doing? He's just stuck there running in motion. Oh, he's digging now. A bit late now. Uh, let's have a look at another screen, shall we? Let's go back to the starting title. <laughs> I only managed to save two. Oh well, 20 points is 20 points, I won't knock it. Oh right, okay, so we've got to go straight to there. Oh, these will come down actually, so what do I need to do? I need to stop, don't I? Stop! No! Send them back the other way. saved a few this time as for the rest they're all um, done for so we can just go up here boom oh, oh hell <laughs> actually this isn't too bad first one you've got to climb dig no ladder yes which way is it's bringing on the ladder the wrong blooming way <laughs> Wrong way, you stupid humans. I like to be fair, humans wouldn't do that, would they? You know, they they wouldn't um see if we can get one as a climb. Climb up. I've only got six moves left. Ah uh, no! Oh. oh well he just took the plunge, doesn't he? Oh, you've gotta be quick in <laughs> Yeah, you've got to be quick. That's all I can say. Oh, you can't get up that little step. <laughs> I think I've played enough. Uh, what do I think of the game? Well, yeah, it's, it's like them. It's a little bit tough to start with. Um, it's not impossible. <laughs> but it is a headbanger of a game. Um, legendary Spectrum difficulty, I'm afraid. And... Uh, it doesn't shy away from uh, keeping you wanting to play it, just to save those little sprites there. Um, which I think are quite nice to do. I'll have to break them down and have a look at the graphics in them. And uh, yeah, probably could have been a little bit simpler to start with. You know, it gets hard, hard, fast. Instead of introducing each new element of the game. And, so you're able to catch up and, and get on with it. However, you can carry on with the level as many times as you like until you actually get through it. And that's probably a compromise, to be fair. I'm going to give that a 6.5 out of 10. And it's available on uh, download. So if you want to give it a go, give it a go. Tell me what you think. And of course, if you want to leave a comment uh, and suggestions on new games that you'd like to see me play as well, I'll be eager to hear from you. In the meantime, let's move on to the Crash Re-Reviews. Right, this game is going to be 48k only. And uh, this was from out of Crash issue number 2. Uh, well, it was 75 pence back then. Uh, March 1984. And those are the games we're going to be going through from out of that issue today. Right, before we show you this game, the game is by um, Softech and uh, Software Company. It was Andrew Beadle was the author. The game would have cost you £5.95. Let's have a look at the game, shall we? Right, so we've got to go to four and not make the mistake of trying to work the 128k code. There's a great looking loading screen. And as you can see, that's what you get there. You've got Kempston News, so we'll go for Kempston. 
and space to begin. You've got your Sinclair, your keyboard, and your cursor keys, which tends to be the uh, regular thing. Right. Use of computers 73%, graphics 80%, playability 70%, getting started 65%. Remember in the early days of Crash that there were loads and loads of ratings. <laughs> Where they bared, went down to the bare five at one time, didn't they? But uh, this one you had, well, you got three, six, seven, is it, in total? Uh, addictive quality 68%, of value for money 80%, that's not bad really. Uh, overall rating then was 73%. This game is simple, but back in them days, simple games were a good thing, so not a bad. We'll have a look at this by pressing space to start. Right, first of all, you're going to activate my joystick needs controlling. You get to grab these balls, you throw these balls at gaps <laughs> uh, in the pipes. Now, you've got to get the right colour to destroy those. As you can see, there's a pipe... Oh, I didn't last very well there, did I? Right, so okay, we're gonna wear. Uh... Right, we've got a blue one, so I can shoot him, can't I? That's it, right? Now, as you can see, there's a gap in the pipe, so you grab the green one, fire it at the gap in the pipe, and you've repaired the pipe. And uh, now, what we're gonna do is get out, his... get out of his way. They move really fast, by the way. I was changed to a blue colour. In fact, this one homes on you. <laughs> we'll try again. That didn't go to plan, did it? Um, what's the keys? I don't know. I think I'd use the keys rather than that. So, um, no. It's a look. I need to charge my controller. That's my problem. Right. As you can see, the next room on that little brain there is yellow. So we've got a buddy in here. This one doesn't home on you, so it shouldn't be a problem to kill. Now we can repair this hole here. It is yellow for that one, isn't it? Or maybe it's blue on this occasion. Okay. Oh, it's got to be yellow. Yes, it was yellow. I think it was yellow. Right, so let's get out of the screen. Uh, there's a blue screen down here, so I presume there's a blue monster. Oh, stop destroying my pipe. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> Have that. Right, now I can repair that pipe. Remember, the green pipes have got to be yellow. You've got to be pretty spot on with you. So let's repair this one. Hey, you can see your damage is going up. Oh, come on. I've got to be a little bit higher, yeah? Yeah, you have to really hit it. This, this screen's about to be repaired, but unfortunately... Oh. <laughs> you know, it's so much easier when you're not recording. Yes. Okay, let's get into that room down there. We should head towards the green room, to be fair. Oh my wife. Let's just repair that before we come back. Let's get straight to that green room. Oh we can't. Once you enter the room I forgot you've gotta You've gotta kill everything in it. Before you can leave the screen, you need to repair that screen. And I don't wanna go up, I wanna go straight across this time. After you've killed them, if you hit the explosion, as you can see, you still die, despite the fact you've blown them up. So you have to wait for them to be completely destroyed before you're able to proceed any further. How ludicrous is that? But it's part of the game mechanic. I need to change this. Um, to get changes, I've got to get rid of that. And I should have used that there, shouldn't I? Yeah, don't, touch the, don't touch the dying sprite. Else you'll die yourself, right? There we go. I notice the less sprites on the screen, the faster they move. Now I can repair this screen. Uh, next screen's got a no monster in it, so we should be clear here. This one's got a blue monster because it's blue, so um, a blue bad guy, shall we say. 
call them monsters. Because it's monstrously hard. Come on out of the way. Now it's not too bad. I like the use of the sprites are quite good. Bit warm, they do speed up somewhat. Yes, right, now let's start repairing this this bad boy. There's a number of leaks in these pipes, isn't there? There's one of them. As I'm close to that, we can repair this one. This is turned into a green screen, but I don't know how it's a green screen because we've virtually repaired everything. There's a green one down the bottom which is badly damaged, so we've got to get to that fast. Oh, I've missed. Yay! Well, we'll get rid of him first. Oh, he's not a homer. Can we make it to the... Oh, it's gone purple! Oh, it's gone purple now! Let's get, let's get something down here quick, because there must be full of monsters this next room. Yes, indeed it is. And guess what? I've got a yellow thing. And I've got a blue thing, yes. Oh, couldn't fire at him. <laughs> okay, that got an overall rating of 73%, but to be honest with you, I quite enjoyed it. It's simple, but it is at the same time pretty good. Um, for that resist reason, resistance, for that reason, um, <laughs> Microbot, I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10 because I kind of enjoyed that and really found it quite playable. <laughs> Let's reset the machine and move on to the next game. We're going on to a little bit of bleeper sound now, of course this one. Oh, well done of course. If you haven't realised that this actual tune um, down the pipes uh, is the game that I'm taking the music off here. It's actually a take that tune. Um, can you guess which one? It's quite warm in here today, that's why I'm moving my hat. Right then, Earth Defense! <laughs> uh, Atlantic Computing, of course. This was a 16k game. Uh, Donald Campbell. <laughs> uh, he's the one that done this uh, particular game. Use of computer was 62%, graphics was 64%, playability 60%, getting started 68%, addictive qualities was a total of 62%, value for money, this is always the important one, at £4.95, this got 64%, so its overall rating was a respectable 63%. This is the early days of the Spectrum of course, so we're going to have a look at the tap file, we're going to load the 48k game. And the good thing is I don't need to change the music in the back room because I know we're not going to have too much. Whoa! You can use the... Uh, to select one or two players. And, oh, it instantly goes to Kenston Joystick. So we can press... We can choose your level. Well, we're pretty good at this. So let's go for level one, which must be the hardest level ever. <laughs> All fire to begin. So you've got the Q, you've got the cursor key uh, option. But that little box in Claire doesn't use number nine yet. Sinclair key options as well, so it will automatically be Sinclair joystick. Um, press S to restart. Okay. So you've got to basically shoot anything that's coming out of the sky and defend all of these bad boys down here, which is, uh, we've only got a certain amount of... But don't worry, these falling bombs you've got to get hold of. Lost two. I've never used all my bombs, but I've managed to keep three, so I'll get that amount of points. Screen changes colour. Oh, we've got auto focus problems, he doesn't like that, does he, when he does blank. So now, because we've only got three to defend, One to defend. I'm doing really well as you can see. Sometimes though one is easy to defend, isn't it? I've only got a certain amount of shots that I can use. We'll keep the rest of the um, oh, let's turn it down a touch. Let 
the autofocus catch up because of the change of colour. Oh, we got we got missiles inbound from all directions here, haven't we? We're going to leave the like the shots to the last minute. No, I'm dead already. But it's a high scoring game, so you can challenge anybody to see if they can beat your particular score. Okay, I'm dead already. There's no need to bombard me and kill any potential survivors on the ground. Game over player one. Well, congratulations, you've got a new high score. <laughs> Simple but simply enjoyable. And um, yeah, some of these games did need to be great, big mammoth codes of games. That was 16k. And for that reason, I'm going to give it a good, respectable 7 and of 10. Okay, so the next game we're going to have a look at is called House of the Living Dead. 48k of course, uh, no 16k version of this one, um, but it's not a bad game at all. What can I tell you about this game? Well, it was um, the producer was Philips at uh, 48k, £5.95. Uh, use of computer 56%, graphics 66%, playability 70%. Getting started, well that's an interesting one, 60%, addictive quality is 47%, it's going down, it's going down, the ratings are going down, value for money 54%, it's overall rating was 59%, so let's settle for this game. Simple bleeper sound of course, stop the tank, okay, press any key, okay, here we go. Would you like the instructions? No, because I know what I'm going to do. And I'll tell you what you've got to do, you've got to basically navigate yourself round the screen. Now you bleep the sound. Turn it down a touch. Or use your instantly with Kempston joysticks, so that shouldn't be a problem. Right, you're this guy here. Collecting four pieces of a cross and taking them to the centre. Avoiding any particular monsters on the screen. As you can hear, the, the sound in the background is just literally bleeper. And that's the uh, sound of that little monster there that's, that's working its way around the screen. An avoidance game, really. Pretty simple in its design. This screen layout does not change, the colour of the screens do, but the amount of monsters you get also changes. Once you've completed the cross, you put to bed the nasty. Moving on to the next screen, you'll then get two nasties to avoid. This time you've got a, well, what looks to be a skeleton man. That was close, wasn't it? Two more pieces of the cross to get, and we've got through this particular screen. Look, he's one leg shorter than the other. Can you see it? Interesting death sequence when you get caught with him. You'll see, no doubt, because eventually I will die. Doesn't matter which particular part of the place you put the cross, you can go to any one of the four sides with the cross, um, which is. A shame because really if that was the top left that would add an extra mechanic to the game uh, rather than being put in any old order. Two of them are dead so now we're going to get three of them and so on and so forth. Each uh, new monster can be a new sprite or it can be a recreation of a second sprite. There you go. They look like bats to me with big feet. And did you see the death sequence? I mean <laughs> it's effectively that's why doing that, that back and forwards, isn't it? You know, so it wasn't uh, a bit of a cheat art cheat there. I'd rather have an explosion. Oh no! Gonna get done here. Gonna get done. One more to get and we'll move on to the next screen and we'll give it a review. Get out of my way. Oh, you would come my way, wouldn't you? 
fuck until you die. And when you do die, you start all over again. Now there's no, oh, there's four pieces of the puzzle complete. No, that's four. Sorry, three pieces of the puzzle complete. Let's go from the beginning. Oh. Congratulations, you've beat the new high score. Okay, what do I think of the game? Well, I'm going to give that a respectable 6.5 out of 10. Found it quite enjoyable, a bit basic, but challenging nonetheless for an early game. Would you have been happy paying that sort of price for it, a fiver? Probably not. You'd have preferred it to have been about a 199 budget game, because some budget games are better than this that I've bought. In fact, there are some great budget games out there. Let's move on then to the next game from issue number two of Crash. Software project game next. We're going to drop the Z80 file in, of course. It was £5.50 uh, when you wanted to buy this back in the day. Uh, Patrick Richmond was the coder or the author involved in that. He used the computer 75%, uh, graphics was given 70%, playability 75%, getting started was 75%, addictive quality 72%, value for money then was a respectable 69%. Why did you think this was good value for money? We'll be the judge of that, won't we? Overall rating, 73%. Interesting fact, guess what? In this issue number two of Crash, Attic Attack was reviewed and given 90%, but it wasn't officially recognised as a Crash Smash because they hadn't put Crash Smash as an item or an it a thing back then. Uh, but let's induct it to the Hall of Fame. Attic Attack, 100% Crash Smash, absolutely. 90%, quite a low rating for such a great game, in my opinion. Um, if I was to give that a percentage rating to this day, I would have said, compared to some of the games that come out in later years that got Crash Smashes, I'd have put it up there at 93 to 94% personally. In the meantime, I'm going to have a look at this game. You've probably seen it before. It does have an iron bleeper sound. Annoying only after all these years because I've got used to the AY sound and we love it. You can use Kempston, which we all do. Opening sequence, simple flashing blocks. Um, basic, that is to be fair. Uh, and we've just got to press start, haven't we? Forgot how to start it. Ah, right. So you've got to thrust this egg or this sack to try and drop those monsters. Those little cross things will get in your way. You can fire at them. Ah, try not to get hit by them though, of course. Ah, that was lucky. I've got that monster. You can't kill the monsters, those little uh, octopillar things, once they've, um, once they've hatched. But you can kill them after they've hatched with uh, this rather looking I think it's meant to be a boulder it's hard to judge sometimes some of these sprites you know it looks like um, I forgot what it does look like oh how did I oh I didn't ah, see it wasn't a waste after all as soon as you shoot these little cross things though they come straight back out of the centre so it's almost pointless killing them you're best to try and avoid them more than kill them and uh, find your route round. But sometimes you leave no option but to shoot them. Oh, come on. Oh, I've missed it. I think the best way, of course, of action is to try and get these. Oh yeah, the, the rock does actually crush them. I didn't know that till just. No, I know it. I can tell you that information, can't I? So, uh, ah, see, I was firing and it just miraculously avoided all my bullets. Oh, you could have caught that with my hatches, couldn't you? One down. Oh, about time. Oh, I 
didn't mean to push it the second time round. Am I getting annoyed? <laughs> I am definitely getting annoyed. This Retro Robins met his match. Met my match with the first game that ever came out on the Spectrum, I can tell you. But anyway, enough of that. See if we can get three of them. Oh, we got two of them, that's good. Two down, three to get. No! Missed him, missed him, missed him, missed him. Filed. Oh, this should be fast. Be fast, be fast. Yes! Look at that. Oh, three of them in one go. One to go. Yeah, I think I'll wait for him to come over this side. He's coming. See ya! Wouldn't want to be ya! <laughs> and there's your first screen cam! <laughs> Great! <laughs> and now you get different sprites. They're not the crosses anymore. In fact, they're probably easier to hit. So uh, we'll give them a go in a minute. Oh, beautiful timing. See that? I dropped an egg right on him. I just need to get over there now, do I? Oh, these ones are moving up the screen. I ain't happy about that. Come on, push them down. Well, got one of them. As long as they don't go start moving across the screen, we're okay. Then it would be really tricky for me. Look! Unless they duck, you can't get them with your bullets. And him. He's moving across the screen. I ain't happy about it. Oh, I feel trapped. Oh, I'm trapped! <laughs> I've completely lost now, it seems like a long time ago. 73% uh, <laughs> overall rating, and personally I thought it was quite, quite a good game, I was quite enjoying that, I've got carried away even. I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10, and uh, one that you may have seen before, you probably have seen it before, but anybody who's new to the system wouldn't have seen it before, would probably find that a fun play for an early game. <laughs> I did, and uh, I started to get quite good at it. Good at it towards the end, after a fair few failures that was. Um, yeah, I'm eager to get a bit further than that. I might even put a poke in and make myself invincible and stop the time. Let's move on to another game then. Going to move on to a classic game that didn't get a crash smash, um, but you'll recognise it if you're in the Spectrum scene. Uh, one of the most playable games, also ported onto the BBC Micro when I first played this. It wasn't on the Spectrum, it was on the BBC, and uh, believe it or not, Night Law, I also played for the first time on the BBC Micro. <laughs> See if you can guess what game it is, I'll give you a few clues. It's by A&F Software, it would have cost you £7.90. Use of computer was given 90%, graphics was given 80%, playability was given 85%, getting started was given 78%, value for money 65%, and anyone who's got a Crash Magazine is now going to be able to look this up. Overall rating was given 80%, the game we're talking about is, and I'll give you a dramatic pause, while I put my paperwork down, take a sip of my Max. <laughs> Refreshed. 48k game of course. Classic, what are we talking about? Never heard of it? Well, shame on you. <laughs> Oops, let's get comfortable because I'm going to be good at this game. It is, of course, the excellent Chucky Egg. I mean, Chucky Egg 2 was good as well, but this was the first, so uh, get to redefine the keys. And press S to start. Notice that this screen gets, uh, love that effect. Choose your number of players, there's only me here. Unless the ginger cat wants to go, but I don't think he's going to do it. Collecting the bird seeds and the eggs. The bird seed will stop them, so it's probably best to get the bird seed first. Because you don't want to lose the bird seed, because it's uh, points, isn't it, after all? Oh, don't tell me I'm trapped already. Ah, got them. Ah, 
interesting game. I like I like the sort of game that it was, but it's uh, it can be a bit infuriating. <laughs> the bounce the bounce sequence where you come off the screen that always made me laugh when I was younger. But I always imagined he was bouncing off his big belly. I bet I could do that now if I hit the wall. If I hit the wall, directly, I'll bounce off my big belly. Right, once you click the last one, you move on to the next screen. Oh, I should have got the seed first. I missed out on some extra points there. And, uh, right, where are we? Okay. I'm too late, you won't get to that, that seed before he gets there. I'll tell you now. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll like it. Over him. That annoying death sequence. Fits the game, fits the time. Good thing is, you haven't got to collect everything again. Once you've got it, you've got it for good. The idea is to collect the eggs, but I like to get the bird seed as well because I want them to starve. <laughs> That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, the first couple of screams are really easy, and uh, I love the change of the screen sequence. Slightly different every time, isn't it? No, I think it's the same, aren't you? This is where it gets annoying. Because you've got to get up there to get that, and uh, unfortunately, the only way to get that is to... I'm sure we've all fell foul. There. Fell foul? Uh huh? No. It's a bad joke. <laughs> Oh. You have to gamble on them coming at the right time. I'm rapidly running out of lives, and believe me, you, I have got past this screen and done many. Usually with the aid of a cheat and using the multi phase 128. Which, incidentally, I've recreated some now, and uh, I'm just going to sell them at bare cost. So if you want a multi phase 128 that you didn't have back in the day, you, as long as you pay for the parts, you can have it at cost price. I will give it, I will practically give them away. The labour was free, it was a lot to make them. I thought it was, I was making them out of love. Right, come on then. Can we get past this screen? I hardly doubt it. Oh, that was lucky, wasn't it? No. No such thing as lucky. Make your own luck in this game. And believe me, that was lucky. <laughs> Ooh. Right, I'm nearly done. That's a gold coin. Okay, so we'll get over to there. Don't tell me I've got to jump over there. <sighs> nearly done, and now I'm nearly done for. Oh, what? Really? <laughs> okay, what do I think of the game? Well, I'm going to totally agree with Crash. I think 80%, uh, or 8 out of 10 was spot on, which is what I'll give it the full 8 out of 10. Even after all this time, it's still playable, and uh, the colour clash is legendary. The birds going up the ladder, we love it. <laughs> it was great. Um, that was the first real incident of colour clash that you'll get on the spectrum, isn't it? That really showed up that they didn't care. Let's get on with it anyways. But did it take away from the gameplay? Absolutely not. Brilliant game for its day, and still to this day, is worth a play. So give it a go, why not? <sighs> Let's move on to one more before we get on with Commodore vs Spectrum. The uh, Attic Attack got 92% but also you had Wheelie that got 93% in this issue of Crash. Um, oh look, if I move myself across, I'm hiding the Commodore down there. Let's move myself back. Got a stamp over me Commodore. Commodore Mini of course, have you already seen? There's a Mini coming out to the A500, uh, Mega 500 of course. Uh, that's something else I'll be uh, probably wasting my money on, but then why not? Why not? It's all good retro, it's all good retro fun. Official sponsor now of Mark Fish's stuff, I do. Please pack him on Patreon. Um, because he makes some great shows and the more people he gets behind him the better um, I enjoy his shows um, I eat the jelly babies because uh, they always make me hungry 
No, he does good, some good videos, Mark fixes stuff. I'm also a Patreon of a Retro Man Cave. Um, please go to Patreon and back that as well. The opening little, so to say, Retro Museum. Uh, also, what, do like to watch one or two of his live uh, retro this week in retro broadcasts. Uh, it's right up my street. It's my interests, of course. So why not? Mr. Wimpy 1984, I've reviewed this one before and I'll review it again. Would have cost you £5.90 by John Wood. And uh, ratings are as follows. Use of computer. Turn this down to sorry. Overpaying myself with my own volume. Don wouldn't be happy because if you don't want people to hear what you say, you put music in the background. Not necessarily the case, that Don. If you're a DJ, that's what you do all the time. <laughs> and I'm from DJ Specifications. User computer 76%, graphics 82%, playability it was 76%. I don't know what happened to my voice then, it went rather wrong, rather strange. Getting started 75%, 75%. <laughs> hmm, 75%. Having a little difficulty with the word percent there, I'm afraid. Addictive quality 76%, and value for money 78% of £5.90. Well, that remains to be seen. Overall rating then was 76%. We're going to play this game now. We're going to give it a play and we're going to see what we think of it today. And my voice went up a few octaves and I don't know why, but it just did. So let's have a look at the loading screen if there is one. You can load it in the 48k mode, of course. Simple game this is. Mr. Wimpy. Boy Ocean. I didn't mention that, did I? <laughs> nice opening sequence, of course. You can use Kempson. No charge left. No charge left in my Kempston. If you leave it too long, it automatically switches off. Especially when it's low on charge. you got a demo mode. We could show you the demo mode, but I ain't going to want to play the game. <coughs> First thing you got to do is uh, avoid everything. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like I've got the ingredients across there. Am I meant to catch these? Yeah. Got to catch me dough on. I fell down my hole. I think we're getting pizza boxes, aren't we? Oh, that little thing is not deadly, it just nicks your box off you. Okay. Got away from me! Got that. Oh, fiddlesticks. <laughs> I'm not liking this at all. Yes! So it's a case of timing, is it? Get away from me. Oh, you little rat bag. Oh no, we've got to go back and get a box. Really? This is not going to plan, folks, but nevertheless. Move off! Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, get out of the way! Stay away from me, you horrible little blue bouncing type sprite thing. No! Yes. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Got it. Oh, what a cheesy game. <laughs> Dodgy beeper saying, right, there we got all the ingredients. Oh yeah. Oh, stupid boy. Uh, really? Well, I think the, the key to this game, if I remember rightly, is you get straight to the top. That's it. Oh! My controller's got a low battery. Honest. Let's get back to that screen. Come on then. You see... Oh, I struggled to get past this bit. But I like the other bit, when you get into the game, I like that little bit of a play. 
doesn't matter because he's the only demo. And as the demo goes, we get to see more than what I'm going to record. Oh. Yay! More lives in tech. Let's have more fun this time round. Okay, you horrible man. Let's get it out. Oh, look. They just get you straight away, don't they? No, come on. It's a bit random, isn't it? Oh. Straight to the top, straight to the top, Wayne, straight to the top. Oh. Oh, was that look or was that skill? Oh, look, come on, one little hairy pixel. One little. As you can see, we've got plenty of lives left. Now I have you. I have you now. I don't have you now. Get away, get away, get away now, get away. Come down the ladder. Good lad. Ha 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 ha. One less pain in the neck to deal with. Yes. I like it when they all bounce down like that. Oh no, where's he come? He's come back! No! 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 Yes, yes, yes! No, 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 no! <laughs> I'm hungry, I want a burger! Oh, come on! Really? Throwing that in the bin right now if I had the cassette in the action. 70%, 77% overall rating. Personally, I'll give it a 7 out of 10! Because I'm a bit wimpy, and uh, that game certainly found uh, me wanting uh, <laughs> to put the cheats in, obviously. Right, Spectrum! Been on a bit of a roll lately. That's right, after the Commodore was on a bit of a roll, Spectrum was on a bit of a roll. Can they continue that roll? Will they count another victory in the bag? They've eased their head by one, and now we're beating the Commodore versus Spectrum race. But, be warned, Commodore have an ace in the hole. Yes, they've got a couple of great games that I've yet to compare between the Spectrum. Which, uh, hmm, we'll see. So join me now for some more Commodore vs Spectrum fun. That sit sound is immense for this game. Immense! I'm even turning up a search. If you didn't see Renegade 3. Ocean, of course. The final chapter. Anyway, we're going to compare this to the Spectrum version of Renegade 3. We're going to play the Commodore version first and then we're going to judge which one is the best. However, with a cracking open demo, and. <laughs> gotta get that volume level there, to Oh, straight away I walked into this box and died. Okay, let's get down there, let's do some flying kicks and start killing some dinosaurs. Okay, let's not start doing some flying kicks. Oh, he bit me. You died for that. Hmm. We've got to go up here then because there's a nasty big jump there that I don't want to be involved in. Oh, it did.
kid die. Oh. I'm doing a lot of dying. But they're going to do a lot of crying. Ah, I see. Just got to time it well, and uh, unfortunately, I don't do that very well at all. So I've killed a family, fair number of these. So I need to kill a few of these before I can move on. The thing is, it's notoriously hard this game. Notoriously hard this game. Anyway, right, we've got past that. Now what we've got to do is get round. Uh, to get over them gaps, I've got to do a flying kick. The music, though, kind of makes this game for the Commodore. The sprites and graphics in the background aren't too bad. You've got to be spot on as well when kicking them uh, dinosaurs. And obviously I'm not going to make that gap so... Um, oh, get out of my way you silly little person. In my way, I'm stuck on a bone. Oh. Right, I've got a bone to pick. Oh no, I've just walked into some spots. I didn't realise I was going to start up there. That's a flaw to the game, of course. <laughs> if you <laughs> sometimes start on the wrong level, you you know you expect to start from where you finish, don't you? Oh. I won't do this well on the spectrum, of course. <laughs> Get out! These little things are just annoying. And they turn into little... See, you start upwards, don't you? I suppose it could be a good thing, really, couldn't it? <laughs> Got the cheating. <laughs> I've had to. Notoriously hard on both. Let's have a look at the Spectrum version. There's a loading screen for the Renegade. The Renegade 3 for the Spectrum. Final chapter. Lovely looking loading screen, isn't it? Um, interestingly enough, you've got a robotic man, looks like, and a zombie, uh, or a mummy, shall we say, he's mummified in the loading screen, boy, imagine. Now, unless that comes later on the level, I don't know. A voice sounds, definable keys, and of course, Kempston joystick. Unfortunately, this time I'm going to use the keys because my joystick has finally got the goat, I should charge it up more. I've only charged it once since I've had it and I've done hours and hours and hours of playing on it. Nice sound in the background, isn't it? Very military sound. Here. It's going to be a close fight, this one. Traditional looking spectrum uh, layout. Ready to enter the prehistoric zone. Prehistoric zone. I'm just going to keep jumping and hope I can make it across there. Remember, if you die, do you, do you actually start down here? Lots of dirty monsters, aren't there? Is that Captain Caveman? Am I about to beat up? Oh, come on, I made that, didn't I? Did I not make that? I'm just benching them. I don't know how this is going to do with my autofocus, but... I 
<laughs> oh, there's loads of them now. Ah, we've got to beat them all up, have we? Well, <laughs> one more punch and I'm done for. Get out of there. <laughs> well, surely there's only going to be. That many of them left now, isn't it? That's it, guys. Get up, Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman! What happened there? If I get any more hairs on my back, I'm going to look like that. <laughs> oh, just a bald version. <laughs> One more to get, and I'm dead. Get out of here. And then we can move on. We can move on. <laughs> can we move on? No, really, I've got to beat all these up as well. <laughs> what was this guy? Oh, really? I'm done for. <laughs> a tragic end to a good show where Retro Robbins fells, fall. And no, falls, foul. <laughs> foul, fall. <laughs> Getting mixed up with my words lately. <laughs> I know what I want to say, but it's all coming out jumbled up. It's been a hard day at work, who cares? As always, if you've enjoyed the Retro Robin show, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Don't touch. Oh, you're waiting to see what my verdict is. Well, perhaps I should just pass on that. Oh, okay then. Therefore, comes the end of the Spectrum run. Sadly, I have to admit, the Commodore 1 sound is just a little bit better. Sadly, I have to admit, that the Commodore has bagged this a win and stopping the run of Spectrum. But I do say that this is probably the better looking version and the more enjoyable of the two versions of this game. To be honest, the game itself, I was never really a fan. It was a complete change of the format of the Renegade. Renegade 1, brilliant. Renegade 2, brilliant. This, what on earth was this compared to the other two? But, you know, it is what it is and... Um, if you look at it as an entirely different game, then it's not too bad, and uh, it's very difficult on the Commodore. But fortunately, I had the uh, pleasure of being able to put the Infinite Lives in, so and Infinite Time, and therefore I was able to go a little bit further on the game than I would do normally. Once I learned how to control it, it was. The thing is, you do tend to miss them. You know what I mean before you hit them. But yes, I've given it the Commodore on this occasion, as always, from me, Wayne Retro Robbins. Do hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Please remember to like, subscribe and share. If you haven't already done, if you haven't already done so, your uh, support helps me to create more content. Documenting, a uh, document, what's wrong with me? I've gone all mixed up with my words. Documentary of every game that's ever released hopefully will be reviewed on this show and shown with a little bit of commentary from myself of course. In the meantime as always from Wayne Retro Robbins it's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching have a nice working week or weekend and it's bye for now.
Honestly, that worked better in rehearsal. Fuck that crap timing. <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? 